Okay, so this theorem proof is a bit of a doozy. It's a little weird and kind of like, all right, sure, I believe you. But I mean, it's it's legitimate. It's just not as straightforward as going this, if and only if, if and only if, if and only if, because it's algebra and clearly blah. You got to actually do some talking through it, which I always hate theorems that require talking or really anything that requires talking ironically. Okay, so anyway, I'll just show you what this kind of looks like. So let's say that we have a prime number like um, 7. All right, and then I'm going to let x is equal to 3. So just to check is what is 3 equal to, well, 3 is equal to 3 mod 7. Yay! So the idea is we just can't have a multiple of 7. So I, x couldn't be 7, 14, 21, etc. So we just need something that's not a multiple of um of that prime number. It doesn't have to be prime itself, it just can't be um, a multiple of the prime number. All right, so the idea is, well, what's um, x to the p minus 1, what's 3 to the 6th? Um, I'll just put it over here because I'm too lazy. 3 to the 6th, and I'm going to mod 7 it, so I'm going to divide by 7. Thank you. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, divide by 7, subtract 104 off of that just to get what the remainder is. And then I'm going to multiply by 7 to get what that is in 7th. So that's 1 7th. Yes, that is in fact 1 mod 7. And if you don't believe me, well, I guess I could say I don't care, but um, I do. I care desperately. Um, the 104 is how many times it wrapped around. So 7 times 104 plus 1 should give me 3 to the 6th. Let's check. So... 104 times 7 plus 1 gives me 729, which was 3 to the 6th. Okay, so we've confirmed that this theorem works for exactly one set of numbers, which is, you know, not quite um, the proof that we're looking for, but, you know, it's a good it's a good start. I mean, if we came up with something that was immediately um, counter to the proof, that would also be really interesting. Okay, so here's the proof, and this is a totally different kind of proof than the ones I've been doing recently. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to consider the set of numbers Q. And it's going to be the set of numbers Q where Q is going from 1 all the way to P minus 1. So actually, I'm going to play along over here. So that means in our case, Q would be um, the set of numbers from 1 through 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so the numbers 1 through 6. Now, the idea is, since p is prime, all of the q are a co-prime to p. So, basically what that means is p is prime, so it's co-prime to everything. Like, if you have a prime number, it doesn't share any factors with, well, I guess because the, the biggest one is 6, right? That's kind of what I meant to say, is um, the numbers 1 through 6, 7 is co-prime to the numbers 1 through 6. So basically the idea is 7 shares no common factors with um, anything in Q. So that means um, the, the, the greatest common divisor of like 1 and 7 is 1, of 2 and 7 is 1, of 3 and 7 is 1, and 4 and 7 is 1, and 5 and 7 is 1, and the greatest common divisor of all of these is 1. They're all co-prime. Okay, so they're all co-prime. How does that help? Okay, Okay. so Q contains all the numbers in mod P except 0. So again, the idea is, um, how shall I say this? Yeah, if I mod 7 anything, then the answer has to be either 0 or the numbers 1 through 6. So Q contains all of the answers that you can get when you mod P something except for 0. All right, so we're going to do that. So we're going to create a whole new set, U, um, and that set is going to come by multiplying each Q by the value of X and taking the mod P, <laughs> okay? So like I said, this is not like a clearly algebra, therefore answer kind of thing. You've got to kind of got to talk your, your way through it. So again, the idea is we have like... How should I say? So we have Q, and it's going 1, 2, 3, all the way to P minus 1. So basically, uh, I'm going to separate these out a little bit. Like, we would have 1, 2, 3, all the way to P minus 
1, so u would be 1x mod um, p. 2 would be 2x mod p. Uh, the next one would go to 3x mod p all the way to p minus 1 times x mod p. So that would be the new set. Okay, now what's interesting about this um, is what you end up getting are somehow you get the same numbers as you got in Q because you're mod P'ing it and it ends up being the same numbers in Q just like in a different order. So for example, you know, um, 1x mod P might end up being 3 and 2x mod P might end up being 7 and 3x mod P might end up being 1 and then, you know, P minus 1x mod P might end up being, you know, 2 or whatever kind of thing. So let's do it with, the, with our actual numbers of an example. So we had um, our values in Q were 1, 2, 3. I'll actually just come over here and do this. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And our um, X value was 3. Okay, X was 3. So if we have the new thing we're going to do for, um, oh, that was, sorry, that was big giant Q. So we're going to have U, and U is going to be 3 mod um, 7, 2 mod 7, 3, sorry, 2 times 3 mod 7, so 6 mod 7, 9 mod 7, 12 mod 7, um, We've got 5 times 3 is 15 mod 7 and 18 mod 7. All right, did I do that right? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, okay. So those are all mod 7s. So 3 mod 7 is 3. 6 mod 7 is 6. 9 mod 7 is 2. 12 mod 7 is 5. 15 mod 7 is about to say 8. 8 minus 7 is 1. And 18 mod 7 is 4. So as you can see, we have the same numbers in both of these. They're just in a different order. So what we can basically say is that the sets um, Q and U, I'll just say Q and U are the same set in a different order. Isn't that crazy? It's super weird. This is not a proof I would have ever come up with. I had to read like 17 version of this proof before I finally was like, oh, I guess I kind of get what they're talking about. And honestly, this was a step I never could make unless I actually just looked at an example. So that's why I'm showing you all the examples because I can't, I can't think through this without the example. Okay, so the way that we say that, I'll actually erase this. The way that we say that in um, math speak is we can say that, um, Therefore, so <laughs> I'm going to write clearly because that's always funny. Anytime someone writes clearly, it means, yeah, the exact opposite. I'll say clearly because I kind of showed that it works. But um, for those of you who are more sophisticated than I, um, that QI is equal to UJ. So if I have Q is an element of big Q and little u is an element of big U, then QI is equal to QJ for some i and j. So yes, <laughs> for some i and j in the set going from 1 to p minus 1. How's that? So basically the idea is that I can match them if I want to, but they're just in a different order. Okay, so that's all kinds of fun. Now, okay, so now we're going to say, um, how should we do this? Let's say for funsies, because I cannot imagine a circumstance in which you would ever do this unless you were just, I don't know, <laughs> really in desperate need for something to do. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply all the elements in U by them each other. And then we're going to say, hey, you know what's really cool is these are all equal to the elements in Q, right? Because I mean, they're the same numbers, just in a different order. Therefore, those two are all going to be the same. <laughs> okay, that's fun. Um, so basically over here, what that would mean is for funsies, um, 
I can't spell for funsies. Oh, we would be multiplying all the elements in U. So three times six times two times, oh, I put these little things here um, to remember where these came from. So sorry about that. Uh, three times six times two times five times one times four happens to be equal to, shockingly, all the elements in Q, which is one times two times three times four times five times six. Who would have guessed it? Totally true. All right. That's all I got. Now, this is a dumb thing. I, I know it's dumb. I can't fix it. It works. It, it's crazy. It's not that it's shocking that it works. It's just shocking that someone thought of doing it. So since those two numbers are the same, we can also say that those two numbers oops, are congruent um, mod n, right? Because if they're the same thing, then they're clearly congruent to each other. Q, P minus 1 mod, oh sorry, mod p. I don't know why mod ended. So they're the same thing mod p. So again, coming over here, um, and I'm not multiplying these together. So it's 720, but I'm not making it 720 on purpose. So we're saying that this is congruent to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 um, mod 7. Okay, so again, I'm just trying to keep track of what we're doing. Um, they're getting kind of long, otherwise I try and keep them on the same screen. I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll do like a big summary thingy at the end. Okay, now what we're gonna do <laughs> is we are going to replace each U on the left with the Q that it was mapped to on the right. So um, basically what I can say is okay, so U1 was equal to sum x, u, i, and, um, sorry, x, q, i, that's how I got it. And then the u2 was equal to sum x, q, I'm just going to say like some x, q, 2, and then some x, q, 3, and then maybe the next one was equal to x, q, 14, and then the next one was equal, or the last one was equal to x, um, Q1, okay, but I'm going to reorder them so that I basically have, um, since each one maps to exactly one, I can rewrite it as XQ1, XQ2, XQ3, all the way to XQP minus 1. All right, so I'm rewriting the left side like that. So I have Q1, Q2, Q3, all the way to X or Q. P minus 1 mod P. Let me show you what that looks like, though, for realsies over here. Um, so the idea would be that, okay, where I got 3. Okay, this is the most important part, I think. The way I got 3 is I did 3 times 1 mod 7. All right? So, um, no, the way I got, yeah, the way I got 3 was 3 times 1. All right? Um I'm going to separate these out actually a little bit more so that I can write just directly below them. So I had 3, 6, 2, 5, 1, and 4. So 3 I got from going 3 times 1. 6 I got from, no, that's not the 6. Where is the 6? The 6 I got from 3 times 2. Okay, so these should be in order. Um, 3 times 2. Um, the two I got from three times three, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So I got the two from three times three. I got the five. So, oh, wow. These are actually already kind of in order anyway. Um, the five I got from three times four, the one I got from three times five and the four I got from three times six. Okay. So basically all of these are the ver are the x's. This is x x x x x x. So these are all x x x x x x x. And this is q one. This is q two. This is q three. Q four. Q five. All the way to q um, p minus one. Okay. So that's how these um, are all coming out to be. And so looking at this numerically, I actually think it's a little bit easier to see what the next step is going to be. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, mod, n, mod 7. 
Now, if you look at what's going on on the left, there should be some part of your brain going, why don't I just factor out a three? Okay, so if I factor out a three, I've got six of them. So it's three to the six times one, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've already taken an extra step over here, but I think it's a little bit easier to see. All right, so coming back over here and doing that same thing, we can be like, okay, so um, I actually don't need this one. Um, I can say, well, so this is what we've got here. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out x to the, there's p minus 1 of them. And I'm left with q1, q2, q3, all the way to q p minus 1. And that still has to be congruent to q1, q2, q3, all the way to q p minus 1 mod p. Okay, and we just proved a minute ago the jump that um, we can essentially, um, well, I don't want to say cancel out the cues on both sides because it only works, um, how shall I say it? So we had the, um, the multiplication one, and we're just going to be applying the multiplication one backwards. I feel like I need to say this better. What we proved earlier in a different video is we showed that if um, that C is congruent to D only uh, if and only if BC is congruent to BD mod N. And so basically, um, as long as B is an integer. So essentially, we're just doing this backwards um, where we're taking B, C is congruent to BD. If and only if C, D is con or C is congruent to D. So what we could say here is let's let this be our B. Okay. And we know that B is in the set of integers because those are all integers. So if I multiply them all out, I've got integers. So um, in this case, your C is going to be this P minus 1. And then D is the, the number 1 that's just missing here. So then we're able to go straight to... Um, x to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. Okay, now over here it's a little bit easier. Where did it go? Come back. So using the same theory, I can again say that 3 to the 6 should be equivalent to 1 mod 7. And if we just want to check that, um, we've got 3 to the 6 is 729. We're going to divide that by 7. We get 104, 143. So yeah, we already knew this. Um, so I feel like we've done this like six other times. Um, and so the question is, is this true? Yes, because it's the um, minus the 104 um, and then times the seven again. So um, it's pretty cool. So uh, believe it or not, that's the, that's the end of the proof. It's a pretty weird proof. Um, Mostly because um, you can't just rely on algebra. You have to rely on algebra and some set theory, um, which is not my forte. And I just like the algebra because I feel like it's very reliable. And set theory makes me feel like I'm a weirdo hippie sitting on a mat in the forest talking about groups and rings. And it just, ah, my brain explodes. But anyway, um, it works. And um, it's either called Fermat's theorem or Euler's theorem. And um, it's definitely uh, a critical point whenever you're trying to prove RSA encryption, which was my whole goal when I started this project.